Precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb called rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. Oh, you give the healing and grace. Oh, has always hunger for. Oh, has always hunger for. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. Oh, you give the healing and grace. Ah, oh, I so always hunger for. together from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice I love your voice you have led me you have led me through the fire in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Whoa. Celebrate Hattie Gordy. Oh, your mercy is running, your mercy is running out. Come Sunday, I don't think it went overflow out. experience. Praise the Lord, everyone. Can you hear me very well? I want to welcome you to a special edition of Family Life, our first one for year 2023. I kept having messages from my people asking me what is happening to family life. Is family life done? Is family life over? Mama Rita, have you stopped family life? My darling, we can't stop family life. 
family life is going to be on until Jesus Christ comes. This is why I am training age. I was almost going to confuse God. My darling, my host, my co-host, levels have changed. My co-host, please come let them see you. My co-host is no longer, if you are looking for him, in the arena of pastors, my darling, I want you to know that you won't find him there. His level has changed. He's now Reverend Emmanuel Chief Ape. Please come let them see you. And I am so, so proud of him. And I am so honored to have him as my co-host. And I want to use this opportunity to congratulate all the people who were ordained on Sunday. My co-host, congratulations. Congratulations. So I want to say congratulations to all the people who were ordained on Sunday, to my co-host, to my two armor bearers, Reverend Yvonne Honya and Reverend Bernice Carter, and then to my biological children, my firstborn, um, I was almost going to say Pastor Naka, Reverend Nana Kosia Kranche Ankara. No longer Pastor Naka, now Reverend Naka. And then to no longer Pastor Papa, but Reverend P. Pastor Papa Crunchy Ankara. I want to say, hey, I see the wife rising up and Jane in cheer. I don't know, hey, but levels have changed. So today we are starting our newest edition family life 2023 and i want you to know that it's going to be great it's going to be powerful more anointing more highs more levels is going to be something else so for those who were asking what is happening to family life i want you to know that family life will never be stopped if i'm no longer in my chair reverend emmanuel chivape will take over and family life will continue. So with me this evening, a very, very special people, Apostle Elect and Reverend Emmanuel Tete Agomeda. Apostle Elect Emmanuel Agomeda is our head of North American churches, and then the pastor in charge of Grace to Grace, our church in Maryland. And then, go ahead, <laughs> Reverend Mena Agomeda is the head of Royal Ladies, North American churches, and is the president in charge of Royal Ladies Grace to Grace. Are you clapping or doing something like clapping? Also with me is Pastor and Reverend Mrs. Rodney Carter. Reverend Bennis is currently the head of our women in ministry. Women in ministry is female pastors and pastors' wives and wives of reverends and ministers and all. She is the head and Pastor Rodney is the head of operations and head of, of um, ministerial armor bearers. She, he will tell you tonight how he met his wife, how it happened. He is, is the armor bearer of the Apostle General, and the wife is the armor bearer of... <laughs> Things are happening. And also with me is Deacon Reginald Atoche. Did I miss? Atoque. Atoque. So Deacon Reginald Salasi Atokwe 
and his beautiful wife, Miriam Atokwe. You are welcome. So we will keep, we will start the ball rolling. We want to first, hey, go to Reverend Ima and Mama Mina. How did you meet? We have heard your story before, but we want to hear your story again. But first, I want to say welcome to my honorable gentlemen and my honorable ladies. Welcome to the first edition and first episode of Family Life 2023. You are welcome. This time we are not in the studio, but we are live here at the um, auditorium of, of, hey, I was almost going to say, I'm, om I'm, I'm almost forgetting Ahimfie. I was going to say Oyel Dome of Ahimfie. But I am here, we miss you. We are back today. We will come back again and visit you. But for now, we are enjoying the oil dome. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Reverend Emma, first to you. How did you meet your wife, Mama Mina? Thanks for having us again one more time. Um, we want to say God bless you for the amazing work that you're doing here. We've been watching every week. And, and enjoy it. And it's been a blessing to lots of people, especially us. And once again, thank you very much. God bless you. Let's go. All right. So we met when I was about 21 years old. Wow. I hope some young people are listening. You met when you were 21 years. Yeah, 20, 20. We catch them early. We don't waste time. So I became born again at the age of 18. Um, and then got myself involved in the church and all of that. So I was basically in church Sunday to Sunday, and everything I knew was just church, talking about Raya House Chapel. And um, one of the times, um, Mama Mina had come to church with her uncle. The uncle, I knew the uncle because I was all over the place in the church. I said, oh, this is my, my niece. So I, I said, hi. So that passed. And then... Every oh, you mean is the uncle that introduced? Yeah, just that's like a casual introduction. Oh, wow. Yeah, more or less. Please, parents, <laughs> uncles and aunties and daddies and mummies are doing introduction. <laughs> if I were you tonight, I would do an introduction. So we will walk from church, um, then up to the Silver Cup area to Circle. I will be working with a group of people. And when she joined the church, she also joined the group because one lady amongst our group lived in the area where she lived. So that's how we began to strike a uh, strike conversation. And that continued. And with time, I, there was some liking. Wow. <laughs> and I remember I, I told my group of um, friends at the time that, look, I've seen this girl. Help me to pray. So, you know, we went into prayer. And there was some prayer. Oh, definitely. And then the rest is history. <laughs> Pastor Rodney, I want to know how you met Reverend Bennis. Please check our microphones for us. Okay. Hello. Mommy, we want to say thank you for this great opportunity having us on your set for the first edition of uh, Family Life 2023. And thank I you. forgot to tell you that Pastor and Mrs. Carter are actually marriage counselors here in Royal House Chapel. It was um, 2020, 2001, when... Um, Apostle Jonah finished with his mansion and then he wanted some prayers to be done before moving into the mansion. So he decided to ask all the prayer groups in the church to come together to pray according to the day, your day of birth. And I, I'm a Sunday born. She's a Sunday born. <laughs> and we were the last to go and pray in the mansion. 
So after prayer, what we pray? What so pray? you 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 prayed with which group? You prayed with I belong which? to Amobera Prayer Ministry, okay. and she belongs to Place of Christ Prayer Ministry. Wow! And we are all Sunday bonds. So after the prayer, and whilst we're leaving the mansion, I said, "I've never seen you before in this church. Are you new?" And she said, "Yes. She just got here 20, 2000, the year two thousand. Okay. So your first time." So, have you been through foundation school? She so, said, you, are, you mean you met in my house? In your house. In Please, then you owe me. You owe me an apostle general. Mommy, we owe you more than that. You hear more of the stories. Wow. More than that. In your living room. That is where we Hey! Live. And so, when I asked her, I asked her, she said she's not been to foundation school. I said, no, you can't come to Royal House Chapel without going through the foundation school. That's the school for our new converts. So today is Sunday. It's on Mondays, every Monday for 10 weeks. I want you to attend tomorrow's one for the first time. And the next Monday, I was there to make sure she attended the foundation. Yes! I was there every Monday for Monday for 10 weeks. Every week, I will come and check on wow. her until she completed foundation school. And then when she was graduating, I bought her for the first time her first Bible. She hey! Had reading Bible in so the you gave church. your engagement Bible <laughs> before the engagement even started. At that wow. time, I, we were just friends. You were just so friends. The started. And then in the next following year, 2002, I decided to propose. Uh, wait, we will come there. We will come there. Deacon Reginald. I want to know how you met your wife. Wow. It's a very great privilege to be here. Every Wednesday, this has been a blessing unto my family and the kids that we have. Wow. We're always looking up to Wednesday. We call it match day life. Wow. Those who like football, we like um, family life series. Amen. Amen. So somewhere in 2012, I accompanied a very good friend to her office for a service to be rendered um, to him. So whilst I waited for our turn, she, was, she had put her head on a counter. And I was, I'm a bubbly person, so I can't be seated and not do anything. So I tried engaging her in a conversation with my sense of humor. But I think her challenges at that time was uh, much greater than my jokes. So she wasn't budging. She wasn't budging for my joke, so I asked whether she was fine. And she said she wasn't feeling too well. So we exchanged contacts. So I checked on her a couple of times. I came by to say hello. We started having drinks. We started going out. You for started lunch. having drinks? Yes, casual drinks. Uh -huh. So it took, <laughs> it took approximately four months. Um, it was a public holiday, and I called to check on her. Then I asked her why she's in the house. And she said, oh, she doesn't have anybody to go out with. And I said, oh, beautiful girl like you, you are wasting yourself. Let me bring my application. <laughs> Some ladies are wasting themselves. <laughs> because um, she, she had everything that it takes to, for somebody to woo her. So I asked her, um, would it be okay with her if I asked her out? Proud to this, all our conversations were on math, um, um, just normal conversations. There was no boyfriend, girlfriend, things that motivated um, each other when, when each time we, we, we spoke on, on phone or in person. Wow. So that was how uh, it all started. Then I, I put my application and she accepted. <laughs> Mama Mina, you met. An uncle introduced, just introduction, you started talking. Then at a point, he came forward to propose. What made you feel that he was the right person? Thank you. Thank you, Mommy, for this opportunity. And thank you for having us. Okay, my uncle came to the church okay. and then I think the next, the following week, he said, oh, I've seen a nice gentleman. Hey! And he looks just like the, the reverend minister, that's the head, the lead apostle general, then rev, you know. 
and I want you to meet him. And I said, ah, to meet a gentleman, nice gentleman. That said, looks like Apostle, Apostle General. General. Then Reverend Ankara in those exactly. days. Exactly. Then I said, okay, I don't mind. But me, I love God. I love to pray. I love praying. So I love where there is fire, the power of God, the presence of God. So he said, ah, I want you to also open your eyes and look for a good man. Wow. And I said, okay. Then three weeks he came for me. And then said, we're going to church. To meet oh, this so gentleman. then you hadn't started church? No, not at all. Not Raya House. Oh, okay. Friend church. So when he brought me, he said, so now brought you to Royal now House. Now brought me to Royal House. Then right after service, no, during service, I think he came to give an announcement or something. Okay. And then he tapped me. My uncle tapped me. He said, that's the guy. That's the guy. Guys! Guys! I said, oh, okay. He's nice. He's nice. He's not, he's not too bad. You know. But I said, I'm looking for the real pastor. I'm looking for the lead pastor. He said, oh, wait. Apostle General will come. Then it was Reverend Uncle will come. So you wait. Well, you should I ask said, her her age at the time. I was around 19 years. 19 years. Wow. 19 and 21. Wow. Says, Apostle Some General people are soon. wasting time. Oh. And then I think right after service, he walked to us. We were on our way, you know, exiting the building. And then he came. He says, hi, uncle. And then uh, my uncle said, Mina, Mina, that's the guy. That's the guy. <laughs> Greet him. Wow. So I said hi to him. And that's how we started. Wow. Yes. So he will call me uh, to check up on me. But every Monday I'm here. I was in Pillars of Christ then. So every Monday you see me in church premises, wow. um, everything. You see me around. Tuesday Bible studies, I'll be here. Right. And then Friday service, you know, because I was so much into the church activities wow. and everything. And that's how we, everything wow. started. Wow. Reverend Bernice, after meeting in my house, In my hall, in my living room, finally, after you had gone through foundation school and everything, when he came proposing, how sure were you that this must be the guy? Thank you so much, mommy. So, when he proposed, I didn't give him an answer. But I think a week or two after when he realized I wasn't giving him an answer, he came to report me to you. Okay. And that was the first time I met you. I see. And you called... Then you people owe me. You. <laughs> <laughs> you called me and asked me, my son has come to tell me something. You said, do you know he's my son? And I said, yes. And then you said, he has come to tell me something. Has he spoken to you? Then I said, yes. Then you asked me, so what are you waiting for? Then I said, oh, um, I am praying. Meanwhile, I knew within my heart that I hadn't prayed. Okay. But I was before a woman of God, so I didn't want to lie. So I said, oh, I didn't want to say anything to feel, for you to feel bad. So I said, I want to pray. I am praying. Then you said, how long will it take me to pray? Mm -hmm. Then I said, please give me some time. I will come back to you. And so I left. Then, a week after that, I had a friend in protocol. It's now a pastor, Pastor Marilyn Mary. okay. Kukua in, in, US. in US. So I had come. She's to, also a reverend. No, oh, she hasn't been ordained yet. Okay. Marilyn met me and said, Benis, una wa ma apostle general be yemi wild, you know. She said in tree, wa ma apostle general be yemi wild, you know. What have I done? She said, Apostle General met me and said, you, my son had proposed to you and you had not accepted. Because at the time, Reverend Bennis and Dr. Kukua Marilyn used to look so much alike and I used to get confused anytime I see them. Sometimes I'm talking to Reverend Bennis and I think I'm talking to 
Dr. Kukua. Sometimes I'm talking to Dr. Kukua and I actually think that I'm talking to Reverend Bernice. Wow. So she said, who, Apostle General Chewa, where were you? When Apostle General sees, sees you, you, you are, you are gone, dead. You are finished. Then I said, oh, why? I said, you, my son had proposed to you and you, you, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Then when I go home, I said, ah, what is it about this guy, this guy. that Mama Rita will call an Apostle General so Kukwa said, um, um, paya, koko, bom, Wow. So she just if said, If you haven't started praying, go and pray. So I decided to pray. Okay. And I remember when I met you, you said, when I pray, there are two ways. It is either a yes or a no. Okay. I would hear God. Or I would have this peace in my heart to know that the journey I'm going on is of God. Truth be told, I prayed and prayed. I think I gave myself about a week or two. I didn't hear a yes or a no, but it was always a calm feeling. So I came back to you and I came to tell you this is how I was feeling, but I didn't know whether it was yes or no, but this is the feeling I was having. And then you told me that it is of God, and so I should go into it. And that is how I accepted wow. his proposal. Wow. Miriam, when he came into your office and you had a headache and there was a holiday and your life was wasting away, how then did you know Thank you so much. that he's the right person? Thank you so much, Mommy. God bless you always. Okay, 2010, um, my life was not so good. So I told my mom about it, and she said, oh. I told her I wanted to change everything around, around me, and I wanted to change my church and everything. So she said, oh, she has been to IBWC before. Wow. Um, That's guy, your mom. Yeah, a guy she went out with before brought her to IBWC, so, and they broke up though. So she said she liked the church, so she'll come with me. So she brought me to Royal House now. And then after service, she introduced me to, to, to Reverend King. And then I started foundation school and all that. So week of the altar, I was so serious. And I felt good. So after that, I felt something new. I felt new. And so when he came, I thought, I felt that, oh, this is one of the doings of God. And then he's new. And why not open up? And I enjoyed his conversations. He, he can talk, and then he can make you laugh, and all that. Yes! He can talk, he can make you laugh. The guys who are not making the ladies laugh, please, check it. So that's how come I accepted to go out with him. Wow. And then when I accepted, he said, okay, he had, he had other commitments with other people. He wants to go and break them up and come back. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I, was, I was surprised though, but I waited. And you then, waited? Yeah, and he came back. <laughs> Reginald. Yes, ma'am. Dicker Reginald, what is about Miriam? There were other ladies in your life. You had met other ladies. What was about her that caused you to go and break relationship with all the other ladies? Amen. Those days I couldn't say amen because I didn't understand what it meant. Wow. Just to say I wasn't born again. Mm. So, like, like you just explained, the calmness around her and all our conversations, unlike the other people, were leading you to, let's go here, let's do this. Let's drink. Let's, <laughs> let's chill. Let's travel here, let's travel there. But with her, all our conversations were about personal development. Okay. It was about improving each other. Mm -hmm. And 
what physically attracted me about her too was her nails. Yes. Wow. Her nails. Just her nails. So her fingernails and her toenails. Things are happening. Fingernails and her toenails. Yes, mommy. Just when we started, an angel walked in. Yeah. Immediately he entered. The room brightened up. Before he walked in, there was darkness everywhere. Immediately he entered. Then I saw some light beaming. Apostle General. The granite in my cocoa. The wele on my watch. The snail in my okra soup. The keta school boys. And my adule just walked in. Somebody saw fingernails and toenails. When we are done, we will go to him and find out what did he see about me. <laughs> Please continue, T.K. Reginald. Wow. Yes, mommy. Because... Um, there are other ladies that, um, when you see them, they have made their nails, but one has come off. Hey! And, and you still They've see made them, their nails, but one, but one has, has come, come off. off. One has come off, and one is broken some way. Or they are chewing, or they are chewing their, their nails. Or they are chewing their nails. Precisely, mommy. Hey. And I'm very particular about a few things around me. You the things be... men look out for. Today I'm hearing... Oh... You have encouraged me to continue to do my nails. <laughs> so it was about if you can manage your own fingernails and your toenails. I'm, I'm a bit difficult sometimes. So you, there's no way you can take care of. You can manage. You can manage. You can manage. Or you, you, we can cohabitate because the things that you'll be doing will be contrary to because your nails are just five, five here. And if you can't manage just 10 nails of yours, it will be difficult to um, take care of my baggage knowing um, where I came from. And our conversations, she was lively too. Anything I said, she laughed, even if it was not funny. So I realized I should, there's no more, there's no need of going to think about jokes. I just have to come and, I mean, because anything I said, she laughed. And so, she spoke a lot of wisdom too. Okay. Now I know where it came from. Wow. She where spoke, did it come from? It came from you, obviously, Bambi. Yes. Mama. It came like, from you. Like daughter, like mother. Yes, mommy. Yes, mommy. Yes, wow. mommy. Yes, mommy. I was in the darkness, but each time she spoke, you could feel some light coming out of her wow. and reaching. Yeah. And reaching. <laughs> Pastor Rodney. You were in Amor Beres. I believe there were so many ladies in Amor Beres. At the time you met in my house, I believe it was to establish here in Royal House Chapel. Why did you decide to move a step ahead? Why did you decide to propose to her? <laughs> After we met in your house... We, we will come back to the challenges. Okay. So, and she completed foundation school. We became friends. And one thing about me, I'm such a person that when I'm your friend, I tell people, no matter who you are, when I enter into your house, all your family members will fall in love with me. Hey, that I one, didn't know that I you I were don't, like your I, father. I, I don't compromise. <laughs> so I got to know her, and I went to her to visit her house, and. The whole family, she, she, one, there was a time that she told me she doesn't understand why the whole family likes me. 
And I saw that she was very hard working. She was trading with the mother. She always wakes up early in the morning to go very serious. And whatever I was um, encouraging her to go through, she was so forceful that she, she was yearning for the things of God. She was always improving, saying, I want to do this, I want to do that. And she also came to join the ministerial armor bearers. Wow. Like getting closer to you and so on. I realized this is a woman that is very serious. You didn't push her into it. Because she was close to me. Okay. And so automatically uh, she got closer. And it, it was also through her hard working. There was a time that she was even trade, uh, selling juice for you. And that. <laughs> You forgot I it. See. Yes, she, she used to sell juice for you at the power spot there. She was very hardworking and she loved the Lord. I, saw, I realized that, oh, there's something unique about her. I've seen other women, but with this one, even the first time I saw her, I said, no, I've never seen you before. Wow. I've never set my eyes on you. I said, it's true. I just got here, Convention of Sense, the year before. So she was just about three, four months in the church that we met and I, I i can't explain but there was something unique about her that made me uh, so we were friends going up and down up and down and then i decided that she's a woman that i have to be with because all the qualities that i want she's very lively she will also make you laugh i also make her laugh and so on and so forth and that made me decided to choose her. there's something that she left out one of the things that made her accepted was because she said, ah, if such a man will go to Mama Rita to inform Mama Rita about our relationship, then I know he's a serious person. And Apostle did not also come in into it. I like that. So those who propose to ladies, and you tell the ladies, don't let anybody know. Don't tell anybody. You have something to hide. You are, you are suspects. And so that was one of the reasons that made her accepted. She said, wow. no. She said, ah, once it goes to Mama Rita to inform, then it is a, a genuine man. Reverend Ima, you were in Christian services at the time. Yeah. Christian services used to be a big group. Um, the ushers, the announcers, security, um, Sunday school teachers, counselors. counselors out of all these people how come you saw mama mina and decided what was it about her that you finally decided to propose to her so i must say that when um i was in the church like i said i was all over the place so i was friends with a lot of people especially ladies all over the place but <clears throat> there was nothing that moved me towards anybody even when I met her first, um, I'll just call her, check on, have you done your quiet time? Uh, have you prayed? Stuff like that. You, you started pastoring a long time ago. <laughs> um, but nothing. Even, um, I remember one time there was a crusade. Um, uh, Maurice Cyril had come to Ghana, and then IBWC was involved in the helping protocol and all of those things. So, I remember we, even, we went together and all of that with my, my group of friends, with herself. We all went to Laboni Secondary School for that um, crusade. But like I said, with time, as I interacted with her, I found out that she has something. I cannot explain what it is, but you can tell that she's serious. Um, even at that, at that young age, she was raising her younger brother who was born you know, out of the country, the mother brought him to the country, wow. and he was raising the younger brother, she was raising the younger brother, you know, by herself, she, wow. she, she was running the shop by herself, basically a lady who you can say that she's a, um, a strong woman, or somebody who is focused on life, and being in IBWC at the time, you know, Apostle General became my role model from afar, from a distance, and obviously everything good about him, you also desire. I look at you, I'm thinking, okay, that's a strong woman. If ever I'm ever going to get married, I will get married to a woman who is strong, who will be supportive. I don't know where God is going to take me one day. So I, I saw all of these um, things in her even at the time. So that's what the thing that moved me um, into praying now about it. And then I had already fallen, but I had to go falling into, into love 
but I have to pray to make sure that uh, this thing doesn't hurt me in future. Please let your questions start flowing. We will try and answer all your questions before we leave here. I would go ahead and ask them about the challenges they went through within the relationship, not when they got married. During the courtship, were there challenges? Um, did they encourage each other? What happened within the relationship? But before I do that, we will go for a short commercial break and we'll be back. This is the maiden edition for 2023. Um, I hope if you've just started or you just joined us, I have great men and women with me here live in the auditorium as I consume. With me is Apostle Elect Reverend Emmanuel Agomeda and Reverend Mina Agomeda, the head of our North American churches and then the lead pastors of Grace to Grace in Maryland. I thought you were going to give me a clap of hands. <laughs> also with me is Pastor and Mrs. Rodney David Carter, here at the headquarters Royal House Chapel. Also with me is Deacon Reginald Salasi Atokwe and Miriam Atokwe. You are welcome. They've been talking to us about how they met and then how sure they were that they were proposing to the right people. And number two, how sure they were before they said yes to the proposal. Now we will go to challenges in relationships. Every relationship goes to challenges. 
during courtship. Mama Rita. Oh, Mama Rita. Hey, I shouldn't go there. Oh, Mama Rita. <laughs> she broke my heart. She did. So let her tell her story. How the broken heart came. Okay. <laughs> Why did you break my son's heart? Oh, oh mommy. Mm. It was not me. Let me put it that way. It was a family kind of thing. So, my uncle that I was living then, that's my late uncle. He's a principled man, and he trained us very well. Okay. So, he brought... I think it was his friend's brother okay. that he got interested in and then told the friend that I want your son to marry my, my niece. My daughter or niece. The, friend was the, the guy was from Holland. Holland. Oh, the, friend, the guy was from Holland. <laughs> Burger. And, so and, the guy and was, I was a larger boy. Exactly. The guy had and money. You, too, you were eating wache in leaves in those oh. days. He, he was not financially sound. The guy was financially sound. And I could tell that this guy, you know, physically, he, he would take care of me, all of that. But the spiritual aspect was something that I did not want to, you know, compromise. So I told my uncle that, please, I know this guy comes down, he was in Holland then, and then he comes around, but there's no connection, there's no chemistry, you know, between the two of us. He would take me out, he would shop for me, I mean, everything, but the love kind of thing was not there. And my uncle said, he's the one that you marry, because he will take good care of you. You, you don't be thinking about the students that, you know, the boys, the young boys around you that and all of that, anything. that don't have money, that nothing. They are that they are not are taking you anywhere. Right. Exactly. That they are not taking you anywhere. And I said, uncle, this one is a problem to me. So he told all the family, my the entire family. Wow. And they started looking at me with an eye, you know. And all of that, I didn't mind them at all. At that time, I was so much into the spirit, like everything about God. I, was, I, had, I had fallen in love with the Lord. So that was it for me. And then knowing him, you know, and then getting the church support. The support system means Reverend Dow was there, you know, coming to church. who would come around and then he would talk to me. Mina, how are you? And all, so I, I, I was loved in the church. And because of that, I decided to take my, my mind and my eyes off what my uncle. And I said, let me start praying. Wow. So I fasted, I prayed. Then all of a sudden, um, I couldn't handle the pressure anymore. You know, and then my uncle said, um, now that you have, you have, you've been going to church here and then you come late. If you don't take care, the time you'll come back home at late, the late time. The door, the gate will be locked and wow. I'll release the dogs. I said, Uncle, I, 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 found, I found something about Christ. So allow me to go. Wow. Then at that time, he, was, he will not come to our house. But then my uncle's um, like company or something, okay. sure. He will come and visit here and there, you know. And then I did not gather courage to tell him about everything that was okay. happening in the house then. So it, it took me by surprise. And then all of a sudden, I started redrawing from him. He will call me. I won't pick up his phone calls. Um, he will come to the shop. You will I'm mind not, I will him. mind him. Um, um, he will talk to my brother then. I called him brother. That's Reverend Eric okay. in North Carolina. Okay. That talked to Mina for me. He will talk to my sister, my cousin. And I won't listen to all of them because at that time... You were so I confused. Was so overwhelmed with everything. And that's how come we broke up. Reverend Emma, please tell me your side of the story. <laughs> so proud to all of this. Everything was going very well. Very happy. I was planning when I finished University of Ghana, I'm going to get married. Life is going to be nice for me and all of that. So it came as a shock. 
Now, I didn't know exactly why she was, uh, she was not giving me attention. I'll be in school, I will go to the comm center, I will call, she will, she will pick their phone, oh, I'm busy. You know, you know those signals when women get ladies give it to you, they are not interested. <laughs> it was hard, you know, it was tough. But after a while, I just said to myself, you know, I'm in school, I need to focus on my studies. Um, I passed out in the check at that time. I told the pastor, this is what has happened. He said, you know what, you're a young man. I want you to learn, study, just focus and learn, graduate. There'll be a thousand and one ladies you can pick from. So that, those words comforted me. Who, who said that? One of the pastors okay. in the church at the time. Those words comforted me and I focused. You wouldn't believe it. That semester I had first class. Wow. So we'll come back to how you came back. Pastor Rodney, what were some of the challenges you went through in your relationship during the Hello. days of courtship? Um, everything was going on well. And all of a sudden, I started getting complaints from people about uh, somebody will come and say she stepped on my toes and she did this. Other people will come and say your friend is pitri pitri and so on. She wants to put her nose in. She wants to put her nose in. She wants to put her nose in everything that everybody. I was just putting that way. And the complaints kept on coming. It got to a point I even came to complain to you. You called her to talk to her. But it was still coming on. When I confronted her and I tell her, she would like to argue over it. And I said, no, at least, why are you alone? Different people will come and say they are having problems with you. Someone, will, this lady will come. This man will come. That you step on the toe. The way you spoke to the person. The way you behaved and so on. And I said, no. It got to a point I said, I can't take this anymore. So I just want to get out of it. That was just the, the reason. Yes, I said I can because just one person and the complaints keep on coming. And whenever I say it, you want to argue with me. I said, no, uh, let's call it. And so we decided to break se up. separate. So you separated for how long? We, it, it wasn't quite long, mommy. <laughs> well, long means hours we, we, we were or friends, days we, 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 or we, weeks. We, mommy, it wasn't quite long because after we separated, Later on, I got involved with another person. Uh -huh. And so when I got another person, that, was, that person too was known to all of you. I didn't hide that from daddy and you. And that didn't work. It didn't last for one year. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I said you, you people were so much involved in our relationship, what happened was that <laughs> whilst we were going through challenges, she said you called her and you told her that, hey, don't worry. This one, it will, it will not work. <laughs> Trouble, but go and pray about it. <laughs> Don't worry, this one, it will not work. Go and pray about it. At that time, later on when we came back and I realized she was also seeing somebody. It was a distance relationship in the wow. UK. But it couldn't happen because she was denied visa. Okay. Otherwise, she would have gone to wow. meet them. At the time that you were talking to her, the same time after losing that relationship that was less than a year, Daddy also called me, Apostle General, was discussing because he knew about that relationship. I said, anyway, go back to Venice. There's nothing wrong about that. Go back and give it a try. So whilst you were saying that it will not, the other one will not work, Daddy was also, and so I said, no, let me, let's consider it. But one particular thing that made us came back easily was that we didn't, uh, we're not, we were still friends, and we were all working together in the church. We were talking. We, she knew I was going out with another person. I didn't know her own, but we were talking. You we're didn't friends. know her own? Because she was, she, was, she was, it was a distance one. But she knew I was going out. She knew, she, she met the lady. And what made her aware that when the trouble came, we came to you and daddy. And so after we came out, and then you told her that, hey, it's an <laughs> It will not work out. <laughs> it's not going to work, but go and pray. You told her again that go and pray. So that was how come uh, the friendship brought us back naturally uh, from daddy's advice and your uh, faith and your belief that this thing will work. Uh, we Before just came back. Before I come to Reverend Bernis, my darling, you are in a relationship and you broke up. Please, 
Don't make it too difficult when you have to come back. You are hearing the story from Reverend Ima and Mama Mina. They broke up, they came back. Today, they are happily married. You are hearing from Pastor Rodney and Reverend Bernice. They broke up, they came back. When you break up, don't cut him off completely because you are hurt. The person is saying hi through WhatsApp. You see it. You delete him. You cross him. You cancel with red ink, with blue ink, with purple ink. My darling, don't make things difficult. The breakup might be for a short time and for a while, and God could bring you back together. Something that is for you, nobody can take it away from you. So, Reverend Bernice, how was life like after the breakup? Why did you decide to go for somebody from UK? So, um, after we, break, we broke up, I was... Mommy, to be frank with you, um, it, it wasn't too much painful because... The late mom, I remember when she introduced, when he introduced me to the mom, the mom told me that his son is difficult. Wow. And that she had signed that the son will never marry anyone apart from me. Wow. And that was the first time the wow. mom was meeting me. The first time the mom met, you, met me. She there said, was something, something about you. And she said, you are the one for my son. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what he does. Relax for him. He's giddy, giddy, giddy. Like he's too much. <laughs> but just have patience and relax for him. So when the difficulties were coming in the relationship and he was saying this person is saying that, saying that, yes, I know I'm a typical sanguine. I'm all over the place. I like to make my case. When you think I'm wrong, I would always stand out and say this and this. If I finally accept that I'm wrong, I would apologize. So, yes, he had his reasons, but okay. You said we should, we, and we broke up actually after the mom passed away. Oh. Yes. So, I just decided to let it go. And also with your advice, you told me, listen, for, if he's yours, he would come back. So just be yourself. Around this time, a friend in the UK, because I was free, I started also chatting. And this friend of mine wanted me to come over to school. So he sent me an invitation and everything, like he said. But when I was bounced visa, you told me when I came back, because I told you of the process, I kept you in the known. I didn't hide it from you. Then you said the fact that you have been bounced meant that that relationship was not of God and that I should go and pray. I knew he was going out with someone else. So I was in prayer, but I didn't tell him anything. And then, lo and behold, I wouldn't say it's my prayer, <laughs> but I want to believe that God himself knew what he was doing. So when that relationship didn't work, you came back and said, Ben Kebu, Solomon. So I told you, pray. I intensified my prayers, but I didn't show anything to him to let him know that I am ready for you or something. I was myself praying, armor bearing, coming to church, and believing God for the right man. Then he came back and said, Ben Wana. <laughs> So you are happy. <laughs> you are happy. It didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> Mommy had prayed for you. Daddy has also prayed for you. The two of them, they didn't want it to work. It's you. I said, oh, is it true? I didn't make it difficult for him because I knew I was praying. So when he came back, I accepted. Wow. And by the grace of God, this is where we are. Deacon Reginald, what were some of your challenges, um, either during courtship or during marriage? If you want to talk about the courtship days, 
or marriage days? What are some of the challenges you went through? Thank you, Mami. So, um, the first um, hurdle was um, about my mom. Because I had introduced a couple of ladies um, to her. <laughs> She wasn't too receptive of her when I, I did the initial introduction. So she felt my mom didn't like her. And for your mom, you brought so many other women that this is one of those. It's just the addition. <laughs> just the addition. <laughs> but she felt my mom didn't like her. So I constantly told her, my mom is a very funny person. She cooks banku for all my friends to come and eat. With time, she will get around you. So that was very, very difficult in the, in the, in the beginning stages of, of our courtship. Then other people give her problem, but not me, though. So she can. Other people? Other people give Around her. you? Yeah, thank you, mommy. Um, <laughs> His other commitments that he went to break up with oh, before okay. coming, they were not so happy about it. So they look for me, and then they, who is it that has caught his attention that he had to come and break up with me? And then he used to go out with gangaliers, hey! <laughs> take tall women, and so I'll go to work, and people will come to look for me. And you go to work and people will come and look for you, yeah, the other they, women. Yeah, they come and warn me and all that. Wow. They'll come yeah. and warn you? Yeah, to stay away from him. Were you fighting? No. Were I, you insulting them? No, no. Were you calling them names? Sometimes I would just go and hide in the washroom and then... <laughs> My darling, what is yours is yours. You don't need to fight. You no need to quarrel. You don't need to call their names. If the thing is yours, it will come back to you. And mommy, uh -huh. she, she never mentioned it until we got married. Wow. That these people were giving her problems. She, she never, never mentioned it. She never mentioned it. She never mentioned it. I hope a lady is listening. Please clap for Miriam. She never mentioned until you got no, married. No, mommy. She, so... Two, three years into the marriage, so, you know, one of my jokes, and I'll bring something up, then she'll tell me, you remember that your, then they came, she and her friend B, came to do me wild at my workplace. Wow. <laughs> Miriam, then, go ahead. <laughs> okay, and then the issue with the mom too, I realized that he was not so, he was, after all his, um, outspokenness, his talk and all that. He was a mommy's boy. Okay. And then he was so attached with the, to the mom. Uh, I'm running around with my mom. I'm going here with my mom and every time my mom, my mom that. So I didn't know how to break through. So I, um, I told him we should pray and fast on he was, he's a Tuesday born and I'm a Saturday born. So on Tuesdays he should fast and on Saturdays, I will fast. And then in the course of the week, when we had time at lunch time, we'll meet at a common place and then we'll share a word of prayer. Wow. Or sometimes we come to the altar once in a week and then we prayed about it. So with time, I think she was okay and then I think that helped us a lot. Wow. We continued it throughout our courtship and preparing for marriage and everything and then we were okay. Wow. Dicker Reginald, I want to come back to you. At the time you met Miriam, you weren't a church person. How did you find yourself now becoming a church person, becoming born again? Today she has no title and you are deacon. How did you do it? Amen. Amen. Oh, Say it's a miracle. Mm. It's a miracle. He says, says it's, a miracle. it's a miracle. You are living here with a miracle today. Yeah. If you are single, my darling, you are living here with a miracle. Yeah. Year 2023 is your year. You will marry year 2023. Yeah. I will come and cut your wedding cake. 
I see some man eyeing you where you are sitting. I see some woman staring at you where you are sitting. Tell somebody sitting by you, go home. I don't know how to say go home in English. Relax, the man is coming. Relax, the woman is coming. Please tell us your story. Okay. Thank you, mommy. So we started our court. We started our courtship. Um, we Please let your questions keep coming. We'll start answering them very soon. We just wanted to go straight into We just wanted to be together. So when she accepted my proposal, we just started thinking about how we could settle down. So we started our counseling and process. So I was asked, prior to this, we had encouraged ourselves to go back to school. So she went back to do her first degree, and I had gone back to continue my second degree. So we started our counseling process. So we come Sundays, we meet Sundays after the service. So I had no choice than to come and sit in the congregation. Because your Be counseling was after service? After the service, yes, wow. please. Yes, please. So in one of the sessions, I was asked whether I would like to be born again. I didn't really give a direct answer because um, the church was a bit too noisy for me. The church was a bit too noisy for you. At that time, at that yeah. time. Yeah. Although I was... Your, your, your wife wants to talk. Um, we, were, we were walking um, along the street. And then I mentioned that the we, way... We want to hear you. I mentioned that the way he likes to organize people, organize his friends, they are going to the beach. Uh, he would be good in my church, organizing people yeah. and all that. So why, why don't he join me in my church? He said, oh, our church is a bit loud and noisy at that time. And then I said his church is also so slow for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so the process of coming every day was transforming me gradually unknowingly wow so unknowingly each time I came and I sat through there was something about the message that I thought this is the bible that I am in the bible I could see myself in the bible the bible came alive to me the Bible was no more a literature it, like I used to know. Um, we all, I grew up in a, in a religious background, with a religious background, so typical church, um, but I wasn't a born-again person. But each time I came, Apostle General would, in two words, AG1, in two words, it would strike me till the next time I come around. Wow. And I'll be meditating. Preaching messages of hope. Preaching messages of hope. That are relevant to the needs of the people. Amen. I would meditate on these words. I'll meditate on them. Then I'll come again. So obviously, I was eager to come the next Sunday. Wow. Yeah. I'll, I'll... And mommy, one thing too, that um, I wasn't so aggressive that I wanted to change him or he should strictly come to my church and my church is better than his church or anything of that sort i took my time i knew that anytime i came to pay my tithes i'll just say a quiet prayer that i want this thing to work i want god to work with this and then it should come out good and then it was just a miracle wow so we went through um, the counseling process um, we got married. Then, among the gifts that... No, before the gifts, I want us now to talk about the wedding itself. You didn't have money. She was doing her first degree. You were doing your second degree. What was your wedding like? Then, I would also come to Reverend Emma. He would tell us what the wedding was like. Okay. So, because... We were both in school, and we were supporting ourselves in school. We decided to put a bit more emphasis on the engagement than on the wedding, because the wedding was formal, and the engagement is family people. And so we made, um, we are pushing the task. So I've tasted her mother's okro before. So I said, OK. Her mom's her, okro. Her mom's okro. Uh, okro soup was nice. So I said, okay, let your mom do okro for 50 people. Okay. 
let my mommy cook banku for obviously my mom cooks banku for all my friends okay let my mom cook banku for this number of people let my big sister cook the wache and let another cousin fry the fish so we apportioned the task on the day of the engagement it was like a picnic because the food was coming from everywhere and mommy the shito that they gave us lasted over a month wow the shito after the engagement lasted over a month then came the wedding day we didn't have money so we made a list first of what we wanted then we sat and we struck out what was not important so if this was her point one and she couldn't defend it too well i struck it out <laughs> if that was my point two and she thought we can do without it then we we'll strike it out but there's one thing about the wedding shoe that I believe nobody sees anybody's wedding shoe. Yeah. But it was so expensive that I felt any kind of shoe could do. So I suggested to her, let's go to Kanta. Kanta Manto. Wow. So I suggested to her, we should go to Kanta Manto. I like the word you use. Kanta. Let's go to where? Kanta. Kanta. Oh, wow. So for our online... Kanta is where you buy second-hand clothes, second-hand shoes, second-hand bags. You can get second-hand brassiere, second-hand aunties, uh, everything second-hand. So you went to Kanta. Yes, oh, I like that boutique. <laughs> so it took a while to convince her. She has never been there. So she said she can't see herself going there. <laughs> then I, 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 I also tried my best. I said, you just, let's go. <laughs> and you would see for yourself so we went and to her amazement the picture that she had there were shoes that were store rejects that you could pick that were cool wow. at a very decent price ah. that can save my pocket mommy that can save your pocket can save my pocket the ladies here please save some gentlemen's pockets wow so we went to get a wedding shoe but when we went she got an engagement shoe and a wedding shoe Wow. I hope a young, a, young, a young couple in relationship who are planning their marriage are listening to this. Then Not also, uh -huh, the wedding. Then also on the wedding day, I had so many friends that catering for friends would be difficult. Mm -hmm. So we decided to do fruits and water, which sounded very strange. So we got somebody that, can you just decorate make the, the, the fruit look display. nice. Just make it look nice. So we came to the glory shed, assess the place. We said, okay, let's just put the, um, the fruits there. When we close, we just march there. We had a small wedding cake. Um, our counselor will cut the wedding cake for us. We share the grace. Everybody takes their fruits and off we go. <laughs> because it, it was not a point to Please, prove. please, take your time. Some people are not listening. So the fruits, what fruits? We went to, again, we went to... We, we woke up early at dawn, the wedding day. We woke up at dawn, we went to Agoboloshin. Agoboloshin, yeah. Yes, we went to get watermelon, um, pineapples, Pineapple. oranges, um, uh, yeah. yeah, and a few other ones that we couldn't get there. We went to Kuala to get strawberries. Just a few foreign ones to spice, to, yeah. to break to some garnish class. it, yeah. to garnish it. Yeah, to just let them know we know what's up. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> to let them know that what we know what's up. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And and mommy, it was not a point to prove to my friends or any family member on our wedding day, because you know us already. We buy watches in a queue together. So why do I come and show you class at a wedding I can't afford? So already, it was not to prove a point to any friend. It was just to make ourselves happy on that wow. day and what our money could buy. After all, on the next Monday, we're going to go back to school anyway. <laughs> so we just needed to do what we could afford based on our budget. I hope somebody is listening to me. My darling, don't look at somebody the way somebody is dancing to dance your dance. 
I always say that some people come from certain families where Auntie A is bringing wache, Auntie B is bringing fried rice, Auntie C is bringing drinks, Uncle A is doing something. If you come from a family where there is no help, it's not like they don't want to help. They are not helping because the day is not there. They don't have it. My darling, cut your coat according to your size. Amen. What they could afford on the wedding day was fruits, watermelon, oranges, um, pineapple. pineapple, with water. Banana. <laughs> I always tell you, I went to one wedding, I will never forget it. Their wedding cake, Reginald, you know Otto? <laughs> Otto is a local um, dish made of yam. We boil the yam, mash it, add palm nuts, um, oil to it, do it nicely, garnish it with eggs. And that is what they cut as their wedding cake. Let's not copy people. People are doing 12 tiers wedding cake, 20 tiers wedding cake, 7 tiers wedding cake, my darling. For all you know, some uncle or some auntie abroad sent them the cake or sent them the money. You too, nobody in your family has ever seen the airport. Wow. We will come back, they will tell us what their life is like today. And I hope somebody is learning something. Is there anything before I will go to Reverend Emma, then we will go to what happened with your wedding gifts. Wow. Wow. You were, you were not born again. No. You didn't know John 3.16. Not at Today, all. Today, what do you do in Royal House Chapel? Wow. It doesn't matter where you sit. It doesn't matter if you are online. If your heart is connected to the things of God, wow. if you appreciate the things Apostle General says for a percentage of his speech, trust me, it will grow every day you come into contact with the oil. Mm. Each time you sit under his feet. Mommy, I have recorded, when I go to work, I go and download every Sunday speech. Wow. Including Family Life Series. Wow. Then when we are home, we just play it. We just play it. Wow. We just play it. And, and mommy, now he's part of the noise makers in the church. <laughs> now he's part of the noise makers. Now the church is not too noisy for him. The church belongs to us, mommy. <laughs> wow. And then I think, mommy, um, the wedding too, we said we didn't watch much people. We wanted 50 maximum. And then his mom was like, she's an elder in the church, she had deacons and her people knew her and then she can't, even her whole church can't, it's more than 100 people and her son is getting married, how would it be that we are taking only 50 people, why, she, she's, she won't accept it and then we didn't argue with her, we just were cool and then fortunately for us, the dates we fixed for our wedding the church also had another engagement somewhere. Wow. And they had to divide themselves into two. And then half will come here, the other half will go to the wow. other engagement. Wow. So Deacon Reginald, uh, finish it up. What do you currently do in Royal House Chapel? So, currently, I am a deacon in Royal House Chapel. You are a deacon? I'm a deacon. I've been a deacon for four good years. Wow. I teach at Foundation School of wow. Discipleship. I have been there for seven good years. Wow. Every time I make sure I am in the house of God. Wow. Because when I am here, you cannot find me. I, am, I'm, I, was, I was also used as a facilitator last year for the School of Restoration. Wow. To teach on how to start business and how to maintain a startup business. Wow. I also am in a group by name, the Father's Love Project, where we go out every month to evangelize 
to people in the prisons. We stand on the streets to win the souls, to win souls of dying people. And they look at us young people, vibrant people, and they say, you are so good. Why are you doing this? Then we tell them, it's because we have experienced Jesus. Wow. They don't ask any questions. They just come for prayer from us. Wow. I would just like to tell a young guy there who thinks he's all yo-yo, that Jesus... He's all what? He's all yo-yo. Please, people are listening to you via the internet. Tell them. He's, he's all what? Yo-yo. He's all yo he, he, He's all being... I don't want to use the word gangster. Because <laughs> he's all guy, guy. But you can't get that in Jesus. Please. Have a change of mind. You can get all that in Jesus. Wow. You can still wear all your chains, come to, Jesus, come to Jesus. You can still do all your things, but now you are doing it for Christ. Amen. I used to like the things, the nightlife. The first time I came to Royal House Chapel um, all night, it was like a clap to me. Because we kept dancing the whole time. <laughs> we, we kept dancing the whole time. And I said, ah. But this is the same thing we have been doing at the other side. Yeah. But this one is better. I said, ah, but the jumping is the same jump, it's the same sweating. It's the same stimulation, that is the same joy, but this one stays. This one is a spirit, and it is called joy. Wow. But that one is last. That one is just for that period. Wow. You just engage it within a period of time, and it wipes away. But then that one is leading you into condemnation. But this one, you sweat, you go home, and a miracle awaits you at your door. Come on now. Teach, foundation school teacher. Wow. So we will come to um, the wedding gifts and the issues you had. Reverend Ima, what was it like... Um, your wedding, um, first few years of marriage, what was it like? Yeah, Some we, people. Um, we have not spoken about how we came back. <laughs> yes. Oh, so, yes. So a, tell us a, how you a, came back. So, so, so this break period, I was in school, obviously always in church. For her, the pressure and stuff was so much that she even stopped coming to church <laughs> for a period. And, um, as I told myself, me, the way I will prosper, this girl will see me one day and she will regret. And she'll be crying, mama. And then I, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Apostle Darkith. Apostle Darkith is the apostle in charge of our Europe churches. So one good thing about him is that he doesn't give up on people. Yeah. So even when I have, you know, I was close to him. I'm close to him. Yeah. At, the, at that time, I was close. I'm still close to him. Um, so like a son to him. So, I mean, he knew, Mina, he knew about the relationship and all of that. And so he kept doing whatever he could to keep, you know, contact with her. We have given up. I have moved on. And then he would tell me, I go, this thing is going to work. When I said, oh, Reverend, uh, that, that, as a minister, that, I said, please, it's, it's not going to happen. Don't worry ahead. Me, I, I would, I'll, I'll move on. Then he would say, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. So I'm in school now. And I remember one day, um, the pastor of North Carolina, Reverend Eric Achian, who is related uh, to her, said, you know, my sister, she did that. Oh, she did that. You know, you for you for me on you ten can take her. I said, me forget, girl, forget, forget. The thing that girl do me, I know will go back. <laughs> because we're serving the protocol also together in the church. At that time, so it went on. I was in school. Um, she herself, you know, started coming to church again. Reach out to me. And I said, oh, me, I've moved on. Reverend Dad would say, don't do that. Hey, you ma, what do you want? You don't do what? The lady's been nice to you, be nice. And when you come to church, you say hello and stuff like that. But I remember when I graduated from the University of Ghana, 
I said to myself, okay, now, I don't want to be doing girlfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend. I have to marry. So I went back into prayer. Like, s- like seriously, seriously. But any time I prayed, I could just get the feeling that I need to go back to Mina. And then I'm quite stubborn. I want to prove a point. So I'm thinking, ah, if I go back, I've broken my word. Oh. <laughs> I've broken my word. I've broken my word. People will not believe me. Cry. Ah. But the more I prayed, the more, the more it was coming. It was coming. It was coming. It was coming. So at a point, I had to just surrender to the Lord and make that decision that, look, let me just be humble, follow God's voice. Um, so I remember that time I had money small B. I remember I took her to some restaurant at Osu. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, uh, Praise. Oh, go ahead. At the time that he was praying, I was, I was also doing my, my personal prayers. Ah. And then I had a family kind of spiritual father that I went to. And I told him about the relationship, both the one in abroad and him. And he said, you pray. God is going to show you some signs. So I started dreaming. And then in a dream, I saw him with A.G. Apostle General. Apostle General. So he was behind A.G. Wow. And it was like a group of, like troop was behind me, chasing me. And then they were the ones, you know, protecting me. And the dream kept coming. It was not once, not twice. It was always coming to me. And I said, so one time, I told Reverend Eric, Palmer, I called him Palmer. I told him, I said, ah, I've been having some funny dreams about Ima. I think I have to go back to I mean, Royal House Chapel. Wow. And he said, at the time, at you the had time, stopped church. I had stopped church. So I was having that series of dreams. And I said, no, I think I have to go back to church. Um, that is where, you know, I realized that I should come back and I wow. came back. Wow. Let me, let me also add this. So at the beginning, when we were at IBWC, I never received prophecies from, from Apostle General Daddy. No, I mean, we're always holding people falling down. So I never, but there was one prophecy that he gave to me, I think just when the relationship started, he said he saw me plucking a mango and it was green. Apostle General gave you that prophecy. Yes. Wow. So when the relationship failed, I'm thinking maybe it wasn't the right time for me to go into this relationship. Wow. So that's why it was a green. But then when I was praying to make the final decision, like going back, humbling myself to go back, then the revelation came again that if it was green, don't people pluck mango, put it somewhere, and it ripes. So maybe the revelation that was given to you was that at that time you were rushing yeah. and that a time will come that the thing will, the thing will ripe. So I took that and obviously as I prayed, I also had my own inner uh, peace in the process and then took her to that restaurant, told her that... Did, did you pay for it? Oh, I paid. This time yes. I paid. I paid. Oh. Proper restaurant. Oh, that time I started going to London small, small. <laughs> so I had some money in my pocket. So, and you know, when I spoke to her, she didn't resist nothing, and it was set. I think, I don't know whether I can't remember whether I used to discuss this thing with Reverend Dad because he was like a person who was close to me. So I'm not sure whether I even told him I was going to make that move. I think I told him I was going to make that move, and then, and I did. We will go for a a short commercial break and we'll be back. But before the commercial break, this is a message that was sent to me. Good evening, mommy. I'm really loving the first episode of the year. Getting more interesting and learning a lot. I've not regretted coming to Accra from Takrade for this program at all. So somebody came all the way from Takradi just for this program. 
I'm really having a good time in the presence, hearing all these season, seasoned counselors. She said her question. I would go to the question after the break. Please don't change the dial. Remain there. We'll be back in a few minutes. Ghana, are you ready? AC Music in collaboration with Royal House Chapel at Henthia presents Overflow Experience 1.0. Happening live on March 5th, 2023 at Royal House Chapel at Henfield, 5 p.m. sharp. Theme, Forever Grateful. Live in worship is the anointed songstress, Hertie Koji. The Lion, Akesa Brimpong. Women of God, Elsie Duncan Williams. Men of Show, Jayana. Gospel Powerhouse, Kofi Pebra. The Phenomenal, Seth Diamond and worship sensation Jackson Quay. You can't afford to miss this event. God will be glorified. Sponsored by... Even powered by HC Music. Ghana, let's go! This is my overflow season. This is my overflow season. Get ready to experience a night like never before with Ahima Messi, Kofi Usipipra, PC Esther, Anka Lato, Ella Duncan Williams, and your host, MOG. Also ministering Keepers Music and Liberty Voices Choir as MOG Music presents New Wine Concert Theme The Coming Glory on Sunday, the 19th of March, 2023, at the Oil Dome Royal House Chapel, Ahimfie, time 5 p.m. Rate 200 Ghana Cities VIP Gallery Standard 40 Ghana Cities. Gallery double 70 Ghana cities, regular standard 80 Ghana cities, regular double 150 Ghana cities. Visit www.tickets.newwineconcert.com or dial star 389 star 777 hash to purchase your tickets. Sponsors Oduma, Bell Beverages, Bell Aqua, Total Family Health Organization, First Choice Hair and Beauty Saloon, Tank Palace, DDP, E Transact, Oasis Studios, Media Partners. For more information, call 0500-053-881. A few persons who have graced tonight's love therapy session. First of them, Reverend Darkett Amano, head of UK and Europe missions, with a wife... Mama Nandi, the senior pastor for East London Missions. We also have Reverend James from the Massachusetts Missions Royal House Chapel. Please, if you can stand and give us a wave. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are also blessed to have Reverend Johnny Apiakran, head pastor, Tema Central Royal House, area head, Greater Accra, area two. We are also blessed to have Reverend Emmanuel King Foley, head pastor, Michelle Camp, Holy Ghost Temple. Area Head, Greater Accra, Area 1. Thank you, sir. We are blessed to also have Reverend John Atta Agre, Head of Marriage and Counseling Unit in Royal House Chapel, and the President for the Men Makers Ministry. Reverend Joseph Kusubo is also in the house, the resident pastor, Royal House Chapel. Thank you so much, sir. Reverend Dr. Anas Jurenchi is in the house. Oh, royal ladies, can I hear you make a loud noise for her? The Vice President, Royal Ladies Ministry International and Dean of Foundation School, where Selassie is a facilitator. We are also blessed to have Reverend Patrick and Reverend Mrs. Yosin. He is the Director of Finance and they are both marriage counselors. Um, Mama Yosin is also the head of the Teens Ministry here in Royal House Chapel. Please let's put our hands together for them. Senior Minister Boboli and wife are also in the house. Today is his birthday. Oh, wow. can we wish him a happy birthday? We celebrate with you, sir. Also seasoned counselors in the house here at Royal House Chapel. We are also blessed to have a parliamentary aspirant for Domiabra Obom constituency, Honorable Beatrice Efua Asantua Ajekum. Where are you? Honorable Beatrice, 
Okay, Honorable Beatrice is right there. Obom Domiabra constituency. So please, if you are from that constituency, you know who you are. I wish you well. Hallelujah. Mommy, well, viewers, thank you so much for staying with us for the past two hours from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. We are going to continue in-house with the persons who are here. Mommy is going to go on with the guests. We are going to answer all the questions that you have on your mind. Keep them coming. She is going to stay on and answer every single one of them. But we'll be back on your set same time next week with every section that is going to be held right when we go off your screens. So Powerline TV, Facebook Sam Crunchy Ankara, Facebook Mama Rita K, YouTube Powerline TV. We love you. Thank you for joining Powerline TV Family Life Series, the love therapy episode today. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, Co-hosts, before we go off. Yes, please. We don't always get the father in the house. Mm. We don't get the apostle general in the house. Mommy. Out. Before daddy comes. Uh -huh. Someone has asked Pastor Rodney to do something. And I want to read it so that it wouldn't be my words. This is what the person says. Hey, Pastor Rodney, the thing vanish you. <laughs> okay, I've gotten it. You can't, you can't run away. He says, Mama Rita, we trust Pastor Rodney and we trust Reverend Mrs. Bernis Carter. But what we can't trust is whether Pastor Rodney proposed or not. We want to see him propose to the wife right on stage yes! right now. Yes! <laughs> Pastor Rodney, Shame, shame them. Shame them. It's, we can't hear you. We, hey, his microphone is off. The, What's the they they US, 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 UK is watching. They said they don't believe you ever you propose to your, your wife. wife. We want to see Maybe you do it tonight. Maybe it's your wife who proposed to you. Um, so so they don't address want me. to see you propose to your Address them. This is very simple. Uh -huh. She will answer. She will say whether I propose or I didn't propose. No, we no, want we to want see to you see do it. it. How so, you propose? They don't believe me. The we person want, is right no, demonstrate here. It. She we will want answer. to see you. We want to see People you. People talk. Please, do you want to see him? Do you want to see him do it? Please, do want to see him do it. People thought Apostle General didn't propose. They thought I proposed to him. I also general came on national TV and proposed. Knelt down before. Oh, me put your hands together for the father. Proposed. <laughs> Show Please us you are the son of the father. We were not there to see the proposal. We want to see the proposal tonight. Mommy, our 15th wedding anniversary. We were in there. In your living room. We were in I there. I proposed again. We I, were in I, there. I, I so do so it, do it now. again. We want to see the proposal. We want proposal. to see you. Propose, propose, propose. But why should I propose for the second Empress time? Let's propose. No, I don't have to propose for the second time unless you want me to ask. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We'll come back to your set same time next week. Put your hands together for Pastor Rodney. <laughs> Mama Rita, over to you. Give him the microphone. Uh -huh. We want to see you. Marriage counselor. We want to see it here. First edition, year 2023. Can we have Amor Beres behind Reverend Bernice? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Will you marry me? We didn't hear. Will you like to be the only mosquito in my net? <laughs> <laughs> Will you like to be the sugar in my cocoa? Hey, she told him cocoa. <laughs> Will you like to be the mother of my 
Ah, father of your children. children. How? 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 What, what? You are saying father of your children. How? Would you like to be the mother of ah. my three unborn children? Ah. Hey! Don't confuse God. Three unborn children. <laughs> uh, please take the microphone. Reverend Bernice. Did, did you feel love in the proposal? Yes, I will marry you. Yeah. We want to invite Apostle General, the father of the house, Put your hands together to for bless the father. our life audience before we go off. So number one, the lessons for tonight's show is that you don't just marry anyone. Your, the, your progression in life and how far you can go depends upon the one you are sharing your bedroom with. So, number one, number one lesson, you need to seek the face of God because before you were born, God already proposed, God already knew, God had already established who that partner will be. Number two lesson, sometimes in the course of the relationship, even before the marriage, we have learned that there will be upheavals, there will be difficulties and challenges. It does not mean that the mango will never ever get ripe. It could be green for a moment, but it could be yellow in another moment. When you are patient and you wait upon the Lord, for they that wait upon the Lord shall always renew their strength. They will walk and they will run and they will never be weary. These are the lessons that we have learned today. Now, Selassie, quickly, I've heard your story already and mommy forgot, so quickly, chip in. What is your situation now? Oh, you are coming again. And so, you, we, ha we are not done with Selassie's story yet. They started and their, their um, uh, wedding day, it was fruit that they served. Today, we will hear what their breakfast is like, what their lunch is like, and what their dinner is like. And have you done five years of marriage? Have you done five years of marriage? Yes. They are eight years. We will tell you how they celebrated their fifth anniversary and how they are planning to celebrate their tenth anniversary. Yeah. With Apostle Emmanuel and Mama Mina, I blessed their marriage in the United States of America. I was there. The reception was small. I was also there at the tenth wedding anniversary. And ladies and gentlemen, poop. Somebody say poop. When a man meets the woman of the heart of God, the two of them do great things. Today, go to Maryland and see their ministry, what the combination and agreement. Today, you should see Pastor uh, Reverend Bernice and Pastor Rodney, what their union has done. You should see there are three adorable daughters and the level of confidence and intelligence. Children don't become confident when there is no peace at home. Come on, let's celebrate the goodness of the Lord. So therefore, I pray for you. The Bible says there is hope for a tree when it is cut, up, cut away from its root. Even at the scent of water, that tree will blossom again. I pray that whatever difficulties and challenges you are going through, may the spirit of the Lord reach a standard. May the Lord grant you wisdom and may the Lord grant you the grace. May you be intuitive to the word and to the voice of God. May you see clearly the directions of God and may you see clearly the light even in your darkness. I prophesy and I pronounce, let there be light in your darkness. Let there be light in your confusion. If you have lost hope and you don't you think nothing will be happening. May the spirit of the Lord speak peace into your heart. The peace that Mama Rita talked about to Pastor Benis. May you feel that. May you receive that. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May you find the man of your love. May you find the woman of your love. If the love is fading away, may the love be rekindled by the things that you have heard today. May God bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord comfort you on every side. In Jesus' mighty name, I call this one down. And the people of God, clap your hands and shout a big amen. amen.
So we have ended for our online viewers. For you, we will end at nine. We will stay on to do the question time and then we will come back to your screens with new wine concert theme the coming glory on sunday the 19th of march 2023 at the oil dome royal house chapel in time 5 p.m rate 200 ghana cities vip gallery standard 40 ghana cities gallery double 70 ghana cities regular standard 80 ghana cities